Hey everybody, John Wagdon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another post of the week. And today we're going to talk about URIs and blocking URIs. And uh, there was a post that was, uh, that was posted by M. Rad, and then it was answered by Mr. Plastic. And so shout out to both of you guys. Appreciate your uh, contributions in the community. But what M. Rad was wanting to do is, uh, is to disallow a URI. So, uh, so we have disallow a specific URI. Alrighty, so he had this one URI, and I'm going to say example uh, dot ashx, and then we're going to have maybe some kind of uh, you know query parameter kind of stuff. There was an f, and then this is actually exactly what he posted wxr, and then there was some more stuff out there. But anyway, this URI he wanted to disallow that. So any anybody that tries to access that, you can't do it. All right, what he did is he created a custom violation uh, called violation forbidden, violation forbidden, forbidden, B-E-N, okay. So he did that on his ASM, created a custom violation called violation forbidden, and then he created an I rule, and the I rule, the essence of the I rule uh, said when the HTTP request comes in, HTTP request, um, then we're going to we're going to look to see if the uh, HTTP uh, URI uh, matches this right here. It contains this. So what he'd said is um, string to lower string that's string and then to lower and then the HTTP URI. Uh, he said contains, I'm going to kind of flip it around here, it contains the example dot ashx and then et cetera, et cetera. And then if that happens, then he, he set a certain uh, variable to one and then he, and then he continued the uh, I rule and he said when the ASM request is done, so when uh, ASM request is uh, done, then we are going to raise that violation um, of the violation forbidden. So we're going to raise that violation uh, forbidden. So write all that out right here really quick. Forbidden. All righty. Forbidden. All right. Hopefully you can read all my, all my penmanship. All right. So essentially what we're doing is we have a URI that we don't want anyone to get to, create a custom uh, violation called violation forbidden on the ASM, and then we're going to create a, 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 an I rule that checks the HTTP request, string to lower, it's going to check the URI, and it's going to uh, compare that to the URI, it's going to compare this right here to the URI of the request, and if it contains that, then we're going to raise this violation forbidden, you can't get to it. All right, he was having some problems though, um, and he said, hey, this works under certain circumstances, but it doesn't work under others. Uh, so like if you stopped here at the question mark F and you didn't include the rest of it, it works great. But if you include the entirety of it, then it doesn't work. And, uh, and so Mr. Plastic came in and said, hey, it looks like because you're using the string to lower um, before you do the comparison here of the URI to, to what you've written here, then you're lowercasing everything, but you have an uppercase W, X, and R in the URI. And so this is never going to match because the comparison has been strung to lower and you have uppercase characters in your, uh, in your you know, comparison. So then MRAD changed it all and he, what he did is he changed this and instead of doing a, a capital W, X, R, he did a lowercase W, X, R and then it worked, uh, it worked perfectly. So. Uh, appreciate MRAD with the uh, with the post. Appreciate Mr. Plastic was saying, "Hey, this is this is what's going on there." Um, so this is the community helping the community, and we appreciate that. So if anyone's had any kind of issues with um, URI, um, you know, comparisons, and it's not working correctly, this string to lower is one place to look to make sure that you're not comparing uppercase when you are only looking for lowercase. One other thing that I will mention is in an ASM policy, uh, there's this concept of uh, disallow um, UR, URLs. 
URL. So, I'm, and I'll just put ASM policy here. So in an ASM policy, you can actually uh, have a list of disallowed URLs in the policy itself. So rather than having to write an I rule for all this stuff, you could just include the actual URL um, in the policy itself. And then if, it's, uh, if anyone tries to access that URL based on the disallowed URL list of your policy, they can't get to it that way either. So you can do it either way. Um, but uh, so there, you know, there's always more than one way to solve a problem. Uh, but we just wanted to mention a couple of different things out there. Um, so again, appreciate uh, MRAD with the question. Appreciate Mr. Plastic with the help on this. And uh, so I appreciate you guys watching this post of the week. And we will see you out there in the community.